This is Transportation Secretary Tim Gatz. This meeting of the Oklahoma Transportation Commission is being conducted with a quorum of commissioners attending remotely and in person in accordance with the Op Open Meeting Act. The time now is 11 a.m. and the commissioners are now joined into the video conference. The public access will be monitored by ODOT to ensure that if the audio connection is lost or interrupted, the meeting will be stopped until the connection is resolved. If the audio connection is not restored within 30 minutes, the meeting will be deemed adjourned at the time the connection was lost and shall be reconvened at 1.30 p.m. today. If an audio connection cannot be restored at the time scheduled to reconvene, the meeting shall be reconvened at the next business day at 9 a.m. and thereafter on the next business day at 9 a.m. until an audio connection is restored. We are ready to begin, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. I hereby call this meeting to order and ask everyone to please mute your microphones. And I have a few instructions that we do each, each time. Please keep your microphone on, on mute until you're ready to speak. Uh, only members of the commission and the presenters are on the agenda will be recognized to speak. Remember to announce your name before speaking each time so we have accurate meetings minutes of the for, for the record please uh, direct your questions comments and motions to the chair and i'll recognize you roll call votes will be conducted with the commissioner's secretary reading off each commissioner's name commissioners please state your name when you vote the secretary will now call the roll mr coburn uh coburn here mr grimsley grimsley here mr fry miller brian miller here Mr. Shannon. Shannon here. Mr. McCowan. McCowan here. Mr. Dyson. Dyson here. Mr. Alexander. Alexander here. Mr. LaForge. Forge here. Mr. Peterson. Peterson here. That's, at this time, uh, Secretary Gatz, uh, you're recognized for your presentation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, Commissioners. Uh, I've got a few announcements and some introductions this morning. Uh, I want to introduce Ms. Joni Seymour. Uh, she is the cabinet level uh, for transportation. It's a new chief innovation officer. Uh, Joni comes to us from the Oklahoma Turnpike Authority where she served as the chief information officer uh, for the Turnpike. And the chief innovation officer, as we anticipate, uh, will work to promote innovation with a focus on streamlining processes for every business unit throughout the transportation cabinet, uh, which includes the Department of Transportation, Turnpike Authority, and the Oklahoma Aeronautics Commission. Uh, Joni will report directly to the Secretary of Transportation and works with all personnel by serving to encourage organizational and technological innovation and alleviate pain points for the transportation cabinet as a whole. Uh, this will create forward thinking synergies uh, to initiate creative solutions that challenge long-held assumptions and encourage continuous evolution and improvement. Uh, Joni's background in organizational development is gonna be extremely important to us as we progress with our uh, organizational modernization initiative. And she also comes with a very good technological understanding of transportation initiatives in, for the entirety of the cabinet. Uh, so again, we want to welcome Joni to her new role and uh, make an introduction. Joni. Also, Mr. Chairman, I want to recognize uh, Justin Hernandez as our new bridge division engineer. Uh, Justin's been with the department for uh, nearly 20 years, almost all of which was spent uh, as an engineer with the bridge division. Uh, Justin will oversee the department's bridge program, including the design of replacement, repair, and maintenance uh, type activities and the inspection of structures statewide. Uh, Justin steps into the role that was left vacant by Steve Jacoby, uh, who retired from the department, and we are extremely excited to have Justin in this new role and look forward to working with him uh, as we make infrastructure improvements for the future. So, Justin, we're glad to have you with us. Thank you. Also, Mr. Chairman, if I might, uh, the uh, 
uh, governor's work zone proclamation and uh, top 10 seatbelt goal kind of goes hand in hand. Uh, governor Stead issued a proclamation as shown on the screen uh, that is related to the National Work Zone Awareness Week that was from April 26th through the 30th. Uh, this is part of our uh, driver safety education and awareness initiative. Uh, the department, you've heard us talk many times, uh, work zone safety pretty much is a year round activity for us now. Uh, we are able to have construction for most all of the of a year and we really try to bring emphasis on it. But in particular, uh, during the run up to uh, springtime and summer construction activities, we like to put a extra emphasis on it. Uh, the governor was good enough to give us this proclamation. Also folded in is Oklahoma's efforts to improve our seatbelt usage. And that is extremely important. Uh, Oklahoma right now ranks 43rd in the nation for seatbelt usage uh, at about 84%. Uh, it's gonna take an improvement to about 94% to get us into the top 10, uh, but we really need to start talking about it. Uh, so we've incorporated it in to uh, be part of our safety campaign uh, make safety stick, everybody click, uh, and it folds in nicely with our uh, work zone safety initiative. I'd also uh, say that one of the most important safety factors that you've got out on the transportation system is that seat belt. Uh, more than half of the fatalities that happen out on the highway system occur when a seat belt is not in use. Uh, it is absolutely your first line of protection uh, and it using a seatbelt not only improves our national ranking and percentage, uh, but it also can help us uh, with our fatality rate, which is another performance measure for us. Uh, we can have the, the safest designs uh, out on the highway system that we can develop uh, and deliver within the resources we have available to us, uh, but that seatbelt still is our front line of protection. So with that, Mr. Chairman, I uh, appreciate the opportunity to have some announcements this morning and uh, look forward to the full meeting. Happy to answer any questions if anyone might have. Do we have any money to promote? Uh, as I told you this morning in the committee meeting, that is just, that's a really uh, shocking statistic that half the deaths on the highway are because no one's wearing a seatbelt. Uh, we, we, we've got a we need to do something about that. Uh, do we have any funds that are, can we get TV to do to help us with that as a public service uh, announcements? That... Certainly right now, Mr. Chairman, if I might, we are uh, in the midst of a year long safety campaign and front and center in that safety campaign each month is this make safety stick, everybody click uh, promotional uh, side that's directed at seatbelt use. Uh, we're going to continue that for the rest of this year, and we are going to capitalize on every opportunity to put seatbelt use front and center uh, as we begin to uh, ramp up that campaign throughout the summer and for the rest of the year. Uh, so, yes, we put some resources towards it uh, simply to try to raise, raise public awareness. Thank you. Yes, sir. Um, I need some help. I, I've got here uh, item number 54 is approval. Oh, it's approval of minutes. I'm sorry, I misread that. Uh, from the previous transportation from the April 5th meeting, do I hear a motion for approval of the minutes? A motion to approve by Grimsley. Do I hear a second? Second. Uh, Secretary, please call the roll. Mr. Coburn. Coburn, yes. Mr. Grimsley. Grimsley, yes. <coughs> Mr. Frymiller. Frymiller, yes. Mr. Shannon. Shannon, yes. Mr. McCowan. McCowan, yes. Mr. Dyson. Dyson, yes. Mr. Alexander. Alexander, yes. Mr. LaForge. LaForge, yes. Mr. Peterson. Peterson, yes. <clears throat> we had unanimous approval item uh, on item number 54. Um, the consent docket uh, contains items 55 through 60. These items were discussed in detail in our committee meetings. If any commissioners would like to pull an individual item out of the discussion, he may do so at this time. Otherwise, do I hear a motion for the approval 
Mr. Chairman, Chairman, just one, one, one question. I don't, it, and it's, it's very elementary. It has to do with speed zone revisions. Uh, if I'm looking at agenda item 57, um, <clears throat> this is along US 59 and Adair County, including the town of Watts. When, let's take the second one down, it has 60 miles an hour. Um, and then it says beginning at the blah, blah, blah. Then it says pre presently zoned 50 presently posted 50 slash 60 and then parenthetically change. What, what does that mean? Thank you for your question, Commissioner Peterson. Um, there's a, we keep a record or a log of the location in the last recorded uh, commission approved speed zone would be uh, what we show as the 50 miles an hour. It has since been changed. Uh, so we're correcting the record book, uh, not only changing the existing speed, but we're also uh, updating our records. So we're not really approving a change in the speed limit. It's already been changed. We're cleaning up the records. Yes, well, we, you are also approving a change in the speed limit through that area. But the change uh, from what it's posted and what the last record of it is is different and that's why it's noted and as it is i just found it confusing so yes, we're sir. going to post it 60. yes sir and, it, and then the bottom line says presently posted 50 slash 60. yes sir so it's in a transition area so when you're within a transition area uh, the speed limit can be uh, double postings Okay, kind of clear. <laughs> yes, <Thank> sir. <clears throat> Sorry, no other questions. Uh, did you say there's another question? No, I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. No, I have no more questions. Okay. Uh, Secretary will call the roll on the consent docket. Uh, oh, Go. I, I thought, yes. I went to spend. Didn't I get a motion and a second, and then he stopped me? No, I didn't. Okay. That I need a motion for approval. Oh, uh, Coburn uh, moved to approve consent. Do I have a second? Crimson seconds. Okay. Prime our second. All the roll. Right. Mr. Coburn. Coburn, yes. Mr. Grimsley. Grimsley, yes. Mr. Frymiller. Frymiller, yes. Mr. Shannon. Shannon, yes. Mr. McCowan. McCowan, yes. Mr. Dyson. Dyson, yes. Mr. Alexander. Alexander, yes. Mr. LaForge. LaForge, yes. Mr. Peterson. Peterson, yes. Mr. Tigler, uh, you can now present item number 61. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, commissioners. This is Tim Tegler, uh, Director of Engineering for ODOT. Item 61 are my programming items. I have two of those this month. Part A is in Cleveland County, Commission District 3. The department requests approval to program a project to repair vehicle impact damage to a sound barrier wall on the east side of I-35 between Main and Lindsay Streets. The cost, estimated cost is $35,000. The project can be ready for an August 2021 letting and the party responsible for this damage is known. Part B in Garvin County, also in Commission District 3, Department requests approval to program a project to repair fire damage to US 77 over Rush Creek. The estimated cost for this project is $30,000. The project can be ready for an August 2021 letting as well. And the party responsible for this damage is unknown. I want to tell you about the second part. We have filed a police report and we're going to be following up on that and keeping, keeping on top of that. So try to answer any questions. Uh, approval is recommended. You heard the presentation. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Do I have a second? Grimsley second. Secretary, please call the roll. Mr. Coburn. Coburn, yes. Mr. Grimsley. Grimsley, yes. Mr. Primiller. Primiller, yes. Mr. Shannon. Shannon, yes. Mr. McCowan. McCowan, yes. Mr. Dyson. Dyson, yes. Mr. Alexander. Alexander, yes. Mr. LaForge. LaForge, yes. You may uh, 
continue with item 62. All right, thank you. Uh, item 62. I believe you missed me for the vote, but I vote yes. Oh, who didn't vote yes? Peter said he did. He didn't answer at first. Okay. Now you may continue. Okay. Thank you. Again, this is Tim Tegler, uh, Director of Engineering for ODOT. Uh, item 62 are my <coughs> contracts. I have 10 parts this month. Part A is a statewide, all districts. This is our update on our current standard drawings and plans. The department has selected two firms to provide and review of the modification of proposal of the ODOT's current standard drawings. This is with EST and HW Lochner. The aggregate not to exceed amount for these two contracts is $2 million. And if I may, I would like to just say a few words about that because this is an opportunity to modernize our standards. Uh, we're going to be identifying some inefficiencies to reduce some construction costs and time, identify some best co construction practices, utilize some innovative technology, and we're gonna research some regional practices for construction methods and some standards. And we're also uh, obviously going to obtain uh, industry support with our AOGC, our ACPA, and OAPA, and ACEC. So that's our asphalt, concrete, and our consulting industry. So I just want to let you know that uh, we're really excited about getting these complete because it's been a, a long time since we've done our standards. So just want to get them up to date. Part B is also a statewide all district. This is our overload permit studies contract. We have selected one firm to provide that to uh, the studies. This is with Grossman and Keith Engineering. Aggregate not to exceed amount for this contract is $400,000. Part C is our Muskogee County District 1. Department has selected Consor engineers to perform preliminary engineering and construction plans for the McClellan Kerr Arkansas River Nav Navigation System, also known as MCARNS. This is for our mooring modernization at multiple locations. Total not to exceed amount is $1,393,100. And Part D is Marshall County in District 2. Department has selected MKEC Engineering to prepare construction plans for State Highway 199. These are two projects that are uh, total not to exceed amount is $1,816,038. The projects uh, are in the eight-year construction work plan with schedule date of 2025. These are right-of-way and utilities. Uh, Part E is McCurtain County and District 2. Department has selected Jacobs Engineering Group to prepare construction plans for State Highway 37. This also consists of two uh, projects in the program. Uh, total not to exceed amount is $2,018,259. Projects are scheduled in your program 2023 and 2026. Part F in Pittsburgh County and District 2, Department selected Freeze and Nichols to prepare construction plans for US 69. Total not to exceed amount is $900,980. Project is included in the eight-year construction work plan, scheduled let date of 2026. <clears throat> Part G is K County and District 4. Department has selected Garver to provide engineering, uh, preliminary engineering and prepare construction plans for State Highway 11. Total not to exceed amount is $634,280. The project is in the eight year construction work plan with a scheduled let date of 2024. Logan County and District 4 is part H. We have selected MacArthur Associated Consultants for construction plans for I-35. Total not to exceed amount is $1,653,485. Project is included in the eight-year construction work plan with a scheduled let date of 2028. Part I, Carter County in District 7. Department has selected Smith Roberts Baldeschweiler for construction plans for US 70. Total not to exceed amount is $1,516,350. Construction uh, work plan. Uh, the, this project is in the eight-year construction work plan scheduled let date of 2026. And finally, Part J, the Department has selected Atkins North America for our construction plans for State Highway 18. Total not to exceed amount is $733,782. The project is included in the eight-year construction work plan, scheduled let date of 2023. Approval is recommended, and I'll try to answer any questions that you gentlemen have. Yeah, my, I have a, this is Peterson. I have a question, um, uh, number C. The, the on the M Cairns, <clears throat> I believe it's the only project that was not in the eight-year work plan. 
Uh, now we don't see many of the the uh, <clears throat> um, many of these types of projects, but is there any reason it wasn't in the work plan? The uh, that's a good question, Commissioner. Uh, sometimes we do have just the right of way and utilities in the work plan, and our plan is to try to get those in our our next upcoming work plan so we can get that uh, funded. And as you can see, that's a twenty six million dollar ticket item. So. Yeah. And, and no no particular uh, completion dates? Um, I don't know if we have one of those. Yep, go ahead. Mr. Chairman, if I might. Commissioner Peterson, on the MCARN system, what you see there is the department's efforts to put ourselves in a position to take advantage of potential grant opportunities that may come uh, and to deliver a project that will uh, make a difference on the current mooring system that exists within the McClellan Kerr navigation system. Okay. Uh, those moorings are not sufficient, uh, especially in light of the flood that we experienced in 2019, uh, to support adequate um, mooring of barge traffic in the area. Uh, so the, again, this project is going to put us into a position to have a shovel ready project uh, that'll help us maybe obtain grant funds to be able to uh, or whatever other opportunities might present uh, to reconstruct and rebuild those moorings if that makes sense Mr. It, it does it does thank you <clears throat> any other questions any other questions do i have a motion for approval alexander motion Madam Secretary, call the roll. Mr. Coburn. Coburn, yes. Mr. Grimsley. Grimsley, yes. Mr. Frymiller. Frymiller, yes. Mr. Shannon. Shannon, yes. Mr. McCowan. McCowan, yes. Mr. Dyson. Dyson, yes. Mr. Alexander. Alexander, yes. Mr. LaForge. LaForge, yes. Mr. Peterson. Peterson, yes. Had a, had a unanimous vote. Uh, Mr. Tigley, you may continue with item number 63. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Again, this is, this is Tim Tegler, Director of Engineering. Item 63, I have one part this month. It is in Adair County, District 1. Department previously authorized Atkins North America to prepare final design plans for State Highway 100. The supplement not to exceed amount is $50,000. Project is in the eight-year construction work plan, scheduled let date of 2024. Approval is recommended. I'll try to answer any questions this morning. If you have anything on this one. Any questions? Is that here a motion or approved? Second. Thank you, sir. Please call the roll. Mr. Coburn. Coburn, yes. Mr. Grimsley. Grimsley, yes. Mr. Fry Miller. Fry Miller, yes. Mr. Shannon. Shannon, yes. Mr. McCallan. McCallan, yes. Mr. Dyson. Dyson, yes. Mr. Alexander. Alexander, yes. Mr. LaForge. LaForge, yes. Mr. Peterson. Peterson, yes. Thank you. Item uh, number 64, change orders with cumulative total of 75,000 uh, or less. Mr. Leonard. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. Uh, this is John Leonard, state construction engineer. I'd like to present item number 64, parts A through double C. These are change orders on projects which have a cumulative total of change orders of $75,000 or less. This item is presented for your information only and no action is necessary, but I'd be glad to try and do that. <clears throat> the change orders were discussed in detail in our committee meetings. Uh, there's no question, Mr. Leonard, you're recognized to present Item number 65, with cumulative totals greater than 75,000. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is John Leonard, State Construction Engineer. I'd like to present item number 65, parts A through double K. These are change orders on projects which have a cumulative total of change orders greater than $75,000. Your approval is recommended and I'd be glad to answer any questions. Do I have a motion for approval? LaForge, move for approval. Coburn, second. Any discussion? Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Mr. Coburn. Coburn, yes. Mr. Grimsley. Grimsley, yes. Mr. Frymiller. 
Primary, yes. Mr. Shannon. Shannon, yes. Mr. McCallan. McCallan, yes. Mr. Dyson. Dyson, yes. Mr. Alexander. Alexander, yes. Mr. LaForge. LaForge, yes. Mr. Peterson. Peterson, yes. Thank you. Item number 66. Uh, it's the proposed bid, bid opening, Mr. Hackney. Robert Hackney, Comptroller Division, Project Funding Manager. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. Item 66, proposed bid openings, consists of the final July 2021, the tentative August 2021, tentative September 2021 bid openings. The department recommends approval. Are there any questions? Do I hear a motion for approval? Motion to approve by Grimsley. Do I have a second? Dyson, nice second. Any discussion? Madam Secretary, call the roll, please. Mr. Coburn. Coburn, yes. Mr. Grimsley. Grimsley, yes. Mr. Frymiller. Frymiller, yes. Mr. Shannon. Shannon, yes. Mr. McCowan. McCowan, yes. Mr. Dyson. Dyson, yes. Mr. Alexander. Alexander, yes. Mr. LaForge. LaForge, yes. Mr. Peterson. Peterson, yes. Thank you, sir. Uh, item number 67 is to award uh, contracts. Uh, Mr. Dels, you may present. Uh, this is Anthony Dels, Office of Engineer Division. Uh, item 67 are the department's recommendations for awards. Uh, my uh, recommendation for uh, presentation will be in two parts. Part A is the deferral from, March, from the March 18th bid opening. The following item referred to by call order was referred from the March 18th bid opening. It is now recommended that this item be awarded to the low bidder. This is call order 780. And part B are our recommendations from the April 15th bid opening. It is recommended that the following items from the April 15th bid opening referred to by call order be awarded. That's call order is 100, 105, 110, 115, 120, 125, 130, 135, 140, 145, 150, 155, 175, 180, 185, 190, 195, 205, 210, 220, 225, 230, and 235. This concludes our recommendations for awards and your approval is requested. Do I have a motion? You've heard the presentation. Do I have a motion for approval of item number 67? Before we for approval. Coburn, second. Any discussion? Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Mr. Coburn. Coburn, yes. Mr. Grimsley. Grimsley, yes. Mr. Frymiller. Frymiller, yes. Mr. Shannon. Shannon, yes. Mr. McCowan. McCowan, yes. Mr. Dyson. Dyson, yes. Mr. Alexander. Alexander, yes. Mr. LaForge. LaForge, yes. Mr. Peterson. Peterson, yes. Thank you, Anthony. Item number 68 is the I-35 Highway 9 presentation by Secretary Gatz. Mr. Chairman, commissioners, first and foremost, I want to apologize to Commissioner Shannon, uh, the full commission, and to the Chickasaw Nation uh, for any confusion that I may have contributed to around this project and uh, Certainly, I think if I would have done a better job of communicating, uh, we might not be having this presentation this morning. So uh, certainly and sincerely apologize. With that, the Department of Transportation is, is one of the primary state agencies. And uh, we've got a PowerPoint presentation here that partners with tribal governments on a regular basis for infrastructure improvement projects. Uh, many road and bridge improvements have been successfully completed in close coordination with our tribal partners uh, in most all areas of the state. Uh, we want to uh, go through a presentation this morning to be responsive to Commissioner Shannon's request uh, on tribal agreements and specifically on the I-35 and State Highway 9 West interchange project. Uh, if you would uh, indulge me I'd like to go through the presentation as quickly as I can uh, and then respond to questions when we get to the end of the uh, slide deck. The Department of Transportation and the Turnpike Authority are among the few state agencies that do not require approval from the governor and the Joint House and Senate Committee on State Tribal Relations for an agreement 
for the construction or maintenance of a transportation facility to be effective. Uh, the agency director for ODOT and the Turnpike Authority can unilaterally enter into an agreement with a sovereign tribal nation uh, representing the state of Oklahoma, uh, and that agreement is binding in statute. This is a serious responsibility uh, on the part of the director, and it's something that I take very seriously, uh, especially in the, some of the uncertain conditions that exist today. And some of the things that are, are a result of McGirt that we're paying attention to on the side of criminal law uh, might include uh, some of the uncertainty for the highway system related to everything from accident investigation to enforcement actions. Uh, also, we're paying attention to matters of civil law that are yet to be determined, uh, such as taxation, uh, regulatory authority and responsibility, and even some questions about where to file court proceedings when necessary for right-of-way acquisitions. The department in response is drafting a new and more form formal protocol to advance I'm sorry, I'm not having any trouble hearing me in the, in the room. <laughs> I apologize. So uh, the department is drafting a new and more formal protocol to advance some types of uh, tribal agreements uh, in an effort to facilitate better communication uh, with the tribes and with our internal transportation staff. The protocol will also help to manage expectations of all parties and progress anticipated partnerships on transportation projects earlier in the process to avoid confusion. Of the 11 different types of tribal agreements uh, that we've identified that range from highway inventory additions uh, to driveway permits, most are considered routine and the new protocol will only be applicable to two types. Uh, the first type will be requests for highway inventory additions uh, occasionally, tribes ask to place routes on their federal tribal transportation program facility inventory to enable the expenditure of federal tribal transportation program funds on the designated locations. ODOT still manages those uh, resulting projects and retains ownership and maintenance responsibility for the route, but that is an area that we'll be paying particular attention to. Uh, also, uh, direct project agreements that affect the scope, schedule, or budget of a planned or unplanned highway improvement and where monetary commitments uh, might be included. Uh, occasionally, tribes engage in mutually beneficial partnerships with the department in order to participate in improvements to the highway system. In the context of a $6.9 billion investment in eight-year construction work plan infrastructure projects, as awarded from 2010 through 2020, uh, we had 23 of these tribal agreements that were associated with that, uh, that contributed dollars to the tune of $29 million uh, in highway improvement projects. On a go forward, uh, as we consider what is in the eight year construction work plan uh, included in the 823 infrastructure projects uh, from 2021 through 2028, uh, two have already had tribal agreements executed on them. Uh, the other 16 uh, locations are projects that are under development right now and have yet to have a, a tribal uh, agreement executed. And those will be some of the ones that we'll be taking a hard look at as we uh, continue to develop those partnerships. As a appointed director of ODOT, and in the absence of any further specific statutory directive, I believe it's prudent under the current uncertain conditions to seek the advice and counsel of the governor's office when considering these types of agreements. I can also engage other resources, including the department's own general counsel uh, and certainly the attorney general. Uh, advice and counsel in this instance does not constitute seeking approval or permission to execute an agreement, but is simply a comprehensive discussion to review and make absolutely sure I am fully informed 
when representing the state of Oklahoma's best interest when considering such commitments. To talk specifically now about the uh, I-35 and State Highway 9 West uh, improvements. And next slide, if you would. It's really important to consider the context of Interstate 35 and State Highway 9 uh, and the inter interchange project being developed. Uh, from 2010 through the July of 2019 census update uh, and by percentage in overall growth at 17.4%, McLean County was the second fastest growing county in the state of Oklahoma. Uh, I think we would all agree with that. And we see that uh, certainly transitioning uh, and showing up even at a greater level uh, in the traffic conditions being experienced at this location. Uh, the department and the Turnpike Authority have been working on regional transportation improvements uh, to address this for many years. And then on the slide presentation, next slide uh, from circa 2001, uh, you can see the H.E. Bailey spur under construction in this particular slide. Uh, next slide, the Nine West widening uh, project from circa 2002-2003 that extended the Bailey spur in a widening effort uh, for additional capacity to the Interstate 35 West Nine West interchange. And you can see some of that growth and development continue uh, in the next additional slides where we improved the uh, interchange. And so go to the next slide, Frank. <coughs> Up to and including uh, just kind of an overview of all the things that have gone on and taken place in the region uh, since about uh, 2000. Uh, and those improvements include, as evidenced here, the H.E. Bailey Spur widening of Highway 9 and a major initiative and effort on Interstate 35 uh, that's a continuation of the widening of Interstate 35 uh, that included the Main Street Interchange, uh, the Lindsay Street Interchange, Highway 9 East, uh, widening the South Canadian River Bridge and several operational improvements uh, and bridge improvements within the interchange itself. Next slide, if you would, Frank. For a little bit of additional context, the interchange uh, was included in the original eight year construction work plan that was developed in 2003. I was a part of developing that first work plan. It had, was an extremely important benchmark year uh, for the construction work plan. Uh, and we've began to implement some improvements in the area since then. Uh, this shows you a picture of the interchange as it existed uh, before anything was done to it. Uh, certainly an interesting design, uh, served the area very well when there was very little development uh, in in and adjacent to the uh, Highway 9 West area. Next slide. As we discussed uh, around 2005, uh, we executed a project to improve that interchange on the west side uh, that implemented some ramp improvements and some local road realignment uh, that really was a difference maker as an operational improvement at that time. Next slide. The next phase of development was in response to the State Highway 9 West Bridge over I-35 becoming structurally deficient. Uh, the bridges that are over Interstate 35 in this area have been long problematic. Uh, we've had several go structurally deficient that needed replacement uh, and this particular bridge uh, was one of those. Neither of these projects fully addressed the comprehensive and growing needs of the interchange. Next slide, if you would. At least 12 different design alter alternatives to address the totality of the interchange have been developed and considered since 2001. Uh, A and B in 2001, 
uh, some of the more recent examples, uh, alternatives one through four in 2008. And to give you a little bit of an overview of what some of these look like, I'll walk through a few of them. Uh, next slide, Frank. You can see some different types of designs that include uh, loop ramps, uh, a lot of new design effort, uh, and infrastructure improvement that affect uh, the entirety of the interchange function. Uh, next slide, Frank. And again, this is just for illustrative purpose uh, in looking at some of the alternatives that were developed and considered. Next slide. Next slide. Next slide, Frank. And next. You can see that each of these considers some improvement to the local road access and to the interchange proper itself. Uh, next slide, Frank. This was the most recent alternative that was considered and it is labeled as alternative nine uh, and it is from the year 2012. While an additional interchange project to complete the interchange continued to exist in the eight year construction work plan, dating all the way back to the year 2010, no preferred alternative was selected for the interchange location. Next slide. In 2016, uh, the department received a proposal from the Chickasaw Nation uh, with a concept to implement another operational improvement within the interchange uh, to try to address some of the traffic conditions being experienced. Uh, in July of 2019, I met with Chickasaw Nation Ambassador Neil McCaleb, former Secretary Neil McCaleb, uh, to discuss the proposed operational improvement. Uh, and next slide, Frank, if you would. With respect for the Chickasaw Nation and their transportation partnership, uh, I advised that we would work to make sure the operational improvement was fully and properly considered in the context of the interchange project to include possible financial participation from the Chickasaw Nation if determined appropriate. Uh, the department has worked since then to refi refine the proposed operational improvement and discuss financial participation. During a discussion of tribal agreements with the governor's office, I was asked if the proposal uh, and the operational improvements fixed the interchange for all stakeholders and citizens in the second fastest growing county in Oklahoma? And fundamentally, the simple answer is no, it does not. As a result of that conversation, uh, it came to my full realization that we were considering yet another operational improvement to an interchange that has been in the work plan for 20 years without knowing what our plan to replace the full interchange was. Uh, to add emphasis, after 20 years of consideration and a litany of minor improvements, no preferred design alternative to address the total safety and operational needs of the interchange has been selected. Uh, next slide, if you would, Frank. At this point, it would be terribly out of sequence from a stakeholder and public involvement process to consider any further operational improvements until a design alter alternative is selected and a project is developed for the replacement of the full interchange. The risk of limiting the consideration of full interchange design alternatives is great if another operational improvement is progressed in advance of the preferred alternative identification. Uh, therefore, I directed that the stakeholder meeting that was to consider only the operational improvement uh, be postponed and that we start a process in earnest to determine the best alternative design for the interchange with consideration for the functionality of the interchange access to the local road system and fiscal constraint. All existing alternatives are being reviewed. New alternatives are being developed and considered and all local road access options will be properly considered in the appropriate context of the interchange replacement and through the federal process 
that is necessary to determine a preferred alternative for the improvement. Also, all stakeholders and the public in general will be properly engaged in providing feedback and input to assist in the selection. A change of this type to a significant project is uncommon, uh, but it does occur and is normally taken up in discussions with the commissioners during the eight-year construction work plan rebalancing process. Uh, it's important to recognize that the current project reflected in the eight-year construction work plan as an interchange project uh, with no tribal financial participation uh, is scheduled with right away in 2022 and construction in 2023. No other commitments are included in the work plan to finish the interchange uh, if the operational improvement was advanced as a standalone project. It is also important to know that from 2010 through 2021, the I-35 and State Highway 9 West interchange was rescheduled six times, most recently during the 2020 and 2021 rebalancing process. The thing I can assure you of is that the department will make every attempt to adhere to the current schedule with right away in 22 and construction in 23, uh, but it will be challenging uh, from a project development standpoint and from a resource availability standpoint, and we recognize that. Our intent will be to identify all of the resources necessary to finish this interchange in its entirety during the rebalancing of the eight-year construction work plan and the consideration of Commissioner Shannon, yourself and the full commission will be critical. I'm confident that we will be successful and we can work together to identify and execute the project at the location uh, that the area stakeholders and the travel and public in the region deserves. In summary, our commitment to the I-35 and State Highway 9 West interchange described in the eight-year construction work plan still exists uh, and a potential tribal partnership uh, developed in the proper context is certainly possible. I do need and will continue to seek guidance on the overall framework of entering tribal agreements for the state uh, with some of the uncertainty that currently exists, if only in my mind. Uh, it's just something that I feel is necessary from a directorship standpoint. Uh, the engagement of the governor's office did not cause the stakeholder meeting to be postponed. I did. Once I discovered the interchange project didn't have a preferred alternative selected, and that the process to determine a preferred alternative was incomplete. I'm working with the deputy director now at improving our internal protocol and communication on all tribal projects. Uh, we have that internal protocol in draft right now. Uh, that should help us uh, bring these situations and conditions to light earlier in the process uh, and maybe avoid some of this confusion in the future. Uh, at this particular location, my job is to find a solution for the full interchange. Uh, we're on an aggressive timeline to develop alternatives for the full interchange, including the local road access in the vicinity uh, that's extremely important. The Chickasaw Nation is obviously a major partner and a major stakeholder uh, in the area, uh, but where it's gonna take everybody's help to get this done uh, and certainly some ideas about how we might be able to get our arms around the entirety of the interchange. Uh, from my perspective, <coughs> be without hesitation that I believe it would be a disservice uh, for us to execute an additional operational improvement at that location without having an understanding of the, what the ultimate fix is uh, to try to get our arms around that interchange. So with that, Mr. Chairman, uh, that completes my presentation. Uh, the interchange has got a lot of problems. Uh, it is a major safety concern in the region. Uh, we're doing some things in the area that have helped. Uh, we've got some other things going on, uh, like some new interchange improvements at Goldsby uh, at 74 West that I think will help. Uh, but there is a tremendous amount of development happening in McLean County right now. And the condition that we're experiencing with this interchange is not going to improve until we do some major work to try to fix it. We have done a disservice to this point 
for not having selected a preferred alternative and trying to find ways to get our arms around what would be the ultimate improvement. And again, that's the business that we really need to be focused on. Uh, and we will do our best to advance those operations and ideas quickly. So with that, Mr. Chairman, I would uh, yield for questions that anybody may have. Sure, if I may, I've got a couple, but I want to order. I just want to understand our timing. How are we doing time-wise? Uh, how, how, how long do I have? Because I've got several questions. Okay. Um, first of all, Tim, I want to, uh, Mr. Secretary, thank you for your apology. It, it wasn't warranted or needed. I, I respect you as a, as a professional. I've worked with you for a number of years, uh, even before my time as speaker, but in the legislature, uh, when you were at the Turnpike, and I've always found you to be, uh, frankly, an upfront, honorable professional who understands the importance of ODOT's road um, uh, oversight process. And so um, apology accepted, but not needed at all. I do have a couple of questions, though. Um, I'm concerned about several things that I'm hearing. First of all, I'm hearing you say that Governor Stitt has basically ordered a wholesale change of how ODOT interacts with tribes on transportation uh, projects. And that's very concerning to me because up until this point, um, the process has worked very, very well for the benefit of all 4 million Oklahomans. Is that correct? So, Mr. Chairman, if I might, uh, Commissioner, the governor has an order to change in the process, uh, but I am going to continue to seek uh, advice and counsel on certain types of agreements. And that would be limited to those where we're having monetary commitments that transpire. Uh, and again, if you really want to understand the position I'm in as an agency director, uh, the responsibility of being able to enter into an agreement with a sovereign nation is huge. Uh, and I feel at this particular moment in time, it's prudent to engage the governor's office in those discussions. I appreciate that that's your feeling, that you feel that way. But the reality is the legislature in Oklahoma statutes vests that authority with you and this commission, not the governor's office. Is there someone in the governor's office that has some experience that I don't know about, about constructing highway projects? Because the last time I checked, everything on the eight-year plan is based upon safety and financial commitments and resources. Um, and if there's some other consideration that we're now considering, I think the legislature needs to be aware of it because up to my knowledge, as a former legislator and former chairman of the Transportation Commission, I've never heard of the governor's office being in consultation with ODOT. You have the authority to enter into agreements with tribal governments. Everything from McGirt that I've heard um, dealt strictly with criminal jurisdiction. Uh, I saw that ODOT, I read it from OCPA. I didn't hear it from this commission. It wasn't, it was never presented to us, but I guess ODOT has done a briefing, um, a legal brief on the effects of McGirt. And the first thing I read in it, after, and I read, again, I wasn't presented to us as a commission. Uh, it was read, I, I read it through an OCPA um, uh, email. Uh, I guess they received it before we did, but I read the first thing in that report was that there's nothing that should compromise or, or, or dictate that any of ODOT's procedures should change as a result of McGirt. That was the first thing that that report says. So I'm, I'm curious as to why we're making that change now, because if, if, we're, if we're concerned about McGirt, the way that I understand it, that now tribal um, uh, jurisdiction, tribal boundaries um, have, were never disestablished uh, by statehood, then the reality is every project in Eastern Oklahoma, not just those that are contracted with tribal governments should be questioned. But that's not what I'm hearing you say you're focused on. You're only focused on after discussion with the governor on projects that are in partnership with tribal governments directly. For instance, this project at Highway 9 and I-35, none of that is on uh, a tribal uh, restricted land. It is all on fee simple land. All of the right of ways in the tune of $1.8 million that was donated to the state, none of that uh, is on restricted um, uh, a land. It's all on fee simple land. So I guess to sum up my question, um, why are we consulting the governor's office on something that statute clearly gives the governor no authority on? Mr. Chairman. Commissioner, that is my decision alone. And again, what I'm seeking is insight and information 
on anything that might be occurring in the realm of tribal relations uh, that I may not be aware of. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm going and asking permission, uh, but I think it's extremely important for me at this particular moment uh, to make sure that the governor's office is aware of those types of agreements uh, and what our, pro what our uh, process is to deliver some of those project improvements. Uh, and it's informational on my part alone uh, and what I'm seeking is insight into anything that might be happening uh, that I may not be aware of in the transportation realm. Well, what I'll do respect, Mr. Secretary, I mean, when I consider this governor's history on assessing and deciding what's best in the interest of Oklahoma as it relates to tribes, it might, he might act, that office might actually be the last place I would go seek advice. If we're not seeking advice on the safety of a project, if we're not seeking advice on the financial resources available for a project that's on the eight year plan. I don't think we should be consulting anybody other than this commission. This commission is who's given statutory authority. In fact, um, Oklahoma statute provides that the construction and maintenance of the state highway system and all work incidental thereto shall be under the general supervision, supervision and control of the transportation commission. That's Oklahoma statute 69 section 304A, uh, it goes on to vest this commission with the power to make all final decisions relating to our work on the state highway system. And it compels us to do so in such a manner as shall be to the best interest and advantage of the people of this state. I don't see anywhere where the governor's office is to be consulted on anything uh, as relates to these projects, particularly after that consultation leads to a project being delayed and, and essentially as much as we we want to say we're continuing with the project if the kickoff meeting's been canceled it's been delayed the project is not going and you've even admitted it's going to create a new time change for us to reach it uh to to reach those uh time commitments but i want to go back to something else that you said that i think needs to be brought out and i don't I, others may have questions too so this will be my last one for a minute um you said there's no preferred selected um plan for that particular project at Highway 9 and I-35. But I have a copy of Project Agreement 19314 uh, that was prepared by ODOT with the Chickasaw Nation. This is, a, this is an agreement between ODOT and the Chickasaw Nation that spells out how the project was to be conducted. So the idea that somehow this project is not worthy, even though we voted on it uh, as a commission, even though it's been, it was on there before I entered this commission. This project was on the eight-year plan before I showed up. Um, we voted on it twice, but now I'm hearing you say that perhaps the proposal is deficient. I want to understand why the proposal as lined out in this agreement uh, that was prepared by ODOT, not prepared by the Chickasaw Nation, prepared by ODOT, understanding that the engineers are 60% completed with the assessment of that project, why is that project now all of a sudden insufficient to meet the needs of that district? The city of Newcastle is in support of that project. Uh, the county uh, uh, of McLean County is in project is in support of the project as is. Uh, it is the state's commitment is $1.8 million of a nearly $17 million project. The T Chickasaw Nation is putting in 10 million. I don't understand what the problem is. We didn't have a problem until after that meeting that apparently you had with the governor's office when we kicked, when we canceled the kickoff, kickoff meeting. We were progressing just fine as a commission on this project like every other project on the eight year plan. And my real concern here, Mr. Secretary, is that if we continue down this road, A, we're gonna lose partners. People aren't gonna wanna partner with people who don't keep their word. And frankly, there's a whole history of state governments not keeping their word to tribal governments. And, and I don't want to be a part of that history uh, moving forward. But I want to make sure that the second piece that, I, that I'm really concerned about is if we continue down this path, all of a sudden, the role of this commission is being diminished greatly. And I, I want you to know, I don't take myself very seriously, but I take my responsibilities very seriously, particularly this one as a commissioner. So help me understand um, how we have an agreement for the project to proceed as it is with the map as outlined with the project. But now I'm hearing, and, I, and, and Neil McCaleb, former secretary of ODOT has told me personally that there was a handshake agreement about moving forward on this project. And so now to hear you say 
that that we didn't have an agreement, that we we didn't have an alternative. That's very concerning to me. So help me understand that, please. Mr. Chairman. Commissioner, <clears throat> related to the Nine West project in particular, the project that you're referencing and the agreement that you're referencing uh, was part of a development that only encompassed an operational improvement that was part of uh, a potential consideration of the full interchange improvement. And only upon the realization that we had yet to select the preferred alternative that would fix the entirety of the interchange, uh, I was unaware of that. I was unaware that we had not selected an alternative at that location. Therefore, for lack of a better term, we had gotten the cart before the horse. We were looking at another operational improvement before we understood what it was going to take to fix the interchange. That led me to pause and to go back and say, look, we got to figure out what we're going to do here to fix this interchange. That particular alternative, that operational improvement may work fine in the context of our preferred alternative, but there's no way to know until we get about the business of selecting it and identifying it. And there is a very regimented process that we will go through in order to accomplish that. Part of it is considering operational improvements and phasing that might exist. Uh, the other part of it that's extremely concerning to me is getting our arms around fixing the entire interchange rather than just one movement. From a construction work plan project standpoint, a couple of points of clarification. Excuse me. The project that's defined in the eight year construction work plan is an interchange project. It has $17 million committed to it. Uh, it does yet to show any tribal participation because that tribal participation was undefined at the time that the construction work plan was updated. And so if you look at the way the project is reduced, uh, it's a $17 million commitment to fix the interchange at that location. Uh, the operational improvement, certainly, the, and. Commissioner, I would never minimize the Chickasaw's partnership in all things transportation uh, because they're a great transportation partner. This is simply a matter of an understanding that we had yet to pick the improvement that was gonna fix the entire interchange and we were proceeding with an additional operational improvement that from an engineering standpoint just didn't seem prudent. And Again, we've got to get about the business of figuring out what we're gonna to do to fix all of the movements in this interchange. The accident history map that we show, that we was shown as part of the slide presentation shows that accidents are a problem, not only at this movement, but in the entirety of the interchange. Uh, we've got to figure out how to improve this location and wrecking, I mean, this is the fastest, second fastest growing county in the, in the state traffic will continue to grow. There's 70,000 cars on Interstate 35 there today, 25,000 cars somewhere in that vicinity on Highway 9 West. Uh, Highway 9 West is not controlled access and has stop conditions in existing now that cause some of the problem, but we've got to figure out a comprehensive solution here and get about the business of trying to deliver it. I have more questions, Mr. Chairman, but I, someone else may have some more. I don't want to dominate the entire time, so. I just want to clarify because I, I know this area well. I went to college at OU in the 80s. I've driven it. It was a problem in the 80s, I remember even. Um, and I worked in Norman for many years. I've driven over the overpasses and seen traffic backed up. It's usually five o'clock, which tells me that's commuter traffic going from Newcastle and all these other areas. So it, it, like you said, it is growing. The census data shows that. So basically what you said, this is, a, this is an important project. This is a real project. This is a real need. There are real safety issues. People are getting hurt, possibly getting killed because of accidents. Um, I don't think it's fair to classify this or call this a pet project because pet projects, in my opinion, don't make it on the eight-year plan. And I think it's irresponsible for any state official to call something like this where there's legitimate 
determined, demonstrated safety issues of that project. This is a real project, and this is the people's lives are depending on this. Uh, their, their quality of life, their ability to live their lives is impacted by our ability to respond and do this. So I just want to make it clear, I do not think this is a pet project. This is a very important project. I think it's an overdue project that we're way behind in getting done. I just want to say that for the record. So, Commissioner, I, I would agree. Um, I, what I'll tell you is this interchange has to be fixed. It, it has to be fixed. And I'm not one to kick the can. Uh, I think we've got to identify a solution that will fix this entire interchange at a minimum, improve it beyond what it is today. And my point is, is we were about to execute an operational improvement within the interchange without understanding what the entire fix was uh, to fix all of the movements within the interchange. And I think it's important that we go back and figure out what we're going to do here at this location. Also, there is no other project in the eight-year construction work plan right now to address this location. There's only one, and it's defined as an interchange improvement project. And if we were to execute an additional operational improvement, then there is nothing in the eight-year construction work plan to fix the rest of this problem. So what I'm saying is we've got to figure out how to get our arms around this location uh, and come up with some ideas and the resources and the commitments in the context of the eight-year plan uh, to be able to deliver it. One of the questions, if I may. Uh, the, the statute that uh, Commissioner Shannon spelled out, it, it lays out our duties and obligations, and, and they're pretty heavy. Um, uh, we do have this final authority over all projects, so we're the final decision makers on this, and it's not something that any of us take lightly. We, we live in our communities. We deal with the, the implications and the, the, the outcomes of what we do. So we, we understand the, the levity or the, the severity of what we have to deal with. One of the things that we represent is we represent the public in terms of transparency and trust. And, and trust cannot happen without transparency. People need to see things. And so we're that first stage of representing the public. That information comes to us. When it comes to us, we help make it transparent, make it public. So I was very disappointed to find out about this report when I read about it online. And if it's significant enough that we're having these levels of discussions, I believe we should have known about that. And, and I, to ODOT's credit, I got a copy when I requested it, but I had to request it after I read about it in the press. And that to me is not the spirit of the, the, the relationship I think we've had with ODOT. ODOT is one of the more professional agencies I've ever dealt with. And this has been disappointing for the past month. I, it, it, to me, it's atypical of what I've dealt with, with with ODOT. So I hope in the future, if there's something significant, it can be brought to our attention without us having to request it because this, this type of information should be available to the commission. If it's this weighty and this important, we should know about it. Um, my understanding is that the Aeronautics Commission was charged to do a similar um, legal memo and legal report and the commissioners were briefed, we were not. And so I think that's a breach of basically this trust that we have with, with being able to get information from, from the agency. So my ask is that in the future, something like this, let us know about it, please. Mr. Chairman, Commissioner, the one thing that I can assure you of is that I'm going to redouble my efforts to make sure that we close communication gaps with the Transportation Commission. Uh, you're gonna see that in everything from our uh, monthly proceedings to um, the balancing of the eight-year construction work plan process and make sure that we've got a clear understanding of what's included. Uh, I couldn't agree more. Transparency is a key cornerstone of every transportation improvement. And to that end, there is a very defined process that we go through when we select alternatives and select improvements, for especially on significant projects like this interchange location. We have somewhat circumvented that process by considering an operational improvement in advance of selecting an alternative that will fix the interchange. Uh, what I'm saying is we need to pause, uh, engage that full process, uh, and consider it in the context of every stakeholder, uh, public involvement, and get to a conclusion that'll fix the interchange and potentially have phasing opportunities to make interim improvements. Uh, 
couple of points, Mr. Chairman, if I may. Um, I want to understand this idea of pause, that all of a sudden we're pausing a project that's on the eight-year plan, that you have made the decision we're going to pause the project. Um, I want to know about your conversations with the governor. You said you sought the advice of the governor. What is the advice that you received? The conversation that I had with the governor was very straightforward. Uh, at this particular project, uh, he asked me a very specific question. Does this fix the interchange for all of the citizens in the area and all of the stakeholders? And the answer to that question is no. It does not fix the entirety of the interchange. It's simply an operational improvement. Is that, is that what is on the ODOT plan for, to fix the entire interchange? Is that what the eight-year plan is calling for? As I understood, the project that's defined in the eight-year construction work plan is an interchange project. Okay. And, and so that's what we're supposed to be addressing in the eight-year plan, right? Absolutely. Okay. And help me understand why the proposal that, again, there's an agreement on, there was a kickoff meeting where we were going to notify local officials about the project moving forward. And three days before that meeting, it was canceled. Um, help me understand why this proposal, this proposed project is not sufficient to address that issue, because I don't understand why it's not. Mr. Chairman, Commissioner, what's defined in the proposal from the Chickasaw Nation that the department is engaged in is an operational improvement to the interchange. This result, the work that we did on the operational improvement and the draft of the agreement that you reference uh, was accomplished without my full understanding that we didn't have a solution to fix the entirety of the interchange. That's a failure to communicate on my part with my own staff and I take responsibility for that. And what we need to do now, again, what you're talking about is we have the cart in front of the horse because we are looking at an operational improvement that ultimately will impact the alternative consideration to fix the entire interchange in advance of having that alternative selected. So what we need to do is go back and revisit this interchange in its entirety understand what our alternative is to fix the entirety of the interchange, and then discuss in the context of that consideration, if phasing opportunities exist where operational improvements might be able to be made. Is there any analysis that's been done by any of the ODOT um, engineers that would substantiate what you're saying that this proposal is insufficient to meet that need? And and I'm and I'm I, I got to admit, Mr. Secretary, I'm, I'm now I'm very concerned that, you know, we voted on this twice, um, and not once did we hear that issue come up. In fact, in fact, you told me the last meeting that we weren't pausing anything, that that we weren't going to uh, delay any project, that we were going to stay on schedule. All that we're asking is, as a result of McGirt, we're reevaluating what effect McGirt might have on the situation. But now I'm hearing something completely different. Now, now we're changing the script altogether. Now I'm hearing that the project as proposed doesn't quite meet the, the requirements of what we're hoping to accomplish there at the interchange, that it doesn't fix the entire interchange. That's, that's a complete 180 from what you told me in this commission last week, last month, when you said, no, the only reason that this came up is because of McGirt. And I asked you, well, is that coming as political pressure from the governor's office? Now you're saying, well, no, we didn't get any political pressure. It's actually the, 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 the project itself doesn't quite accomplish what we're hoping to accomplish. And, and that's, that's very different from what, what you told me last time. Why is there such a, a gap in between what you told me last time and what I'm hearing today? Mr. Chairman, Commissioner, again, in a conversation at the last commission meeting that was certainly unanticipated on my part, uh, maybe it should have been, but it was not. What I, what I said was that we were going to have to consider some additional alternatives at this location. Uh, what I was referencing is that this operational improvement within this interchange does not fix all of the problems in the interchange until we figure out what project does in the context of an interchange replacement, 
we really can't give appropriate consideration to operational improvements any further. We already have, uh, and we're the more operational improvements we make within that interchange, the more limiting it will become on what ultimately our design considerations can be to address all of the movements within that interchange. Uh, and we will do everything we can, to your point, to try and keep the project on schedule. And I believe it's within the realm of possibility. It's going to be challenging, but we're going to move very quickly. And you have my commitment. Mr. Secretary, I, I appreciate that, that commitment. But again, what you told me last time was we had an issue because of a US Supreme Court decision. I'm not hearing you reference that at all. I'm not hearing you say that that's an issue at all. Can we, will you help me? Because I prepared a resolution um, that wants to affirm the, the support of the eight year plan and making sure that we're not politicizing it. You know, as, as the Commissioner Grimsley uh, has pointed out, it was a governor's office who called this project a pet project. And I'm glad to hear you affirm that it's not, that you disagree with the governor, that this isn't a pet project. There is a legitimate safety control, safety consideration here. And uh, that is the focus, because that's always been the focus of the eight year plan, safety and a prioritization of financial resources. That's always been my understanding. And it's been very, very successful. I, I gotta be honest with you. What I'm concerned about right now is we know that your role um, has been altered, that your, that your, your uh, relationship with this commission has been changed by the legislature a few sessions ago, and that now you report directly to the governor and not to this commission. And I'm very concerned that because of that decision, that is going to affect how the eight-year plan is, is perceived and how the eight-year plan, uh, frankly, uh, is administered. We know it's been enormously successful. You know, I hear all this talk about making, you know, Oklahoma a top 10 state. Well, we've made Oklahoma a top 10 state in a lot of ways because of the eight-year plan and because of partnerships with tribal governments. And what I'm telling you is this decision to completely, um, you know, adhere to a wholesale change to how we operate with tribal governments, a wholesale change to the way that we administer the eight-year plan, I think it's gonna open the door for political um, influence for the eight-year plan, something that we've tried very hard to get away from as a state. As you know, I've heard this, this body say a million times, I've heard Gary Ridley say it, the state system was becoming almost unmanageable because of the political nature of how this state was conducting um, tribal, I'm, I'm sorry, conducting road projects in the state. Um, it was becoming almost unmanageable because of the neglect that happened. It was because of the eight year plan and leaders at the Capitol that we started to change things around and frankly saved lives in Oklahoma. And so the idea that now we would start going back, you know, moving this state backwards to where we were 40 years ago, I'm just, I'm just not prepared to allow that to happen. And so I just wanna ask you um, as we move forward here, if, if there is an issue with how we're conducting business with tribal governments, this body needs to know about it. We should know about it first. You have been vested with a lot of responsibility to, to partner with and to enter into agreements with at the exclusion of the governor. The Oklahoma legislature has excluded the governor from making those decisions and being a part of that discussion for a reason. And I think it's a good reason and we're seeing it come into fruition why it's a good reason. And I would just say, we need stronger consultation with this body to ensure that this commission is a part of that as we move forward. Because right now, if, if I'm a, as a former legislator, I can tell you, I would be very concerned with the eight year plan. I think that the entire eight year plan now has, be, has been spun into jeopardy because A, you've got the governor's office criticizing projects on it as pet projects. And then I hear now uh, you saying last, last month, that a Supreme Court decision has caused us to give, you know, additional consideration. And now I'm hearing you say, well, no, it's not really that. Uh, we're actually going to consider alternatives because it doesn't quite meet, you know, the, the proposal that we've seen doesn't quite meet the specifications of what we were wanting to happen there. So 
I just got to tell you, moving forward, I think we need to have a, a long discussion about the value of the eight-year plan. And that's why I proposed a resolution uh, to support the eight-year plan. And I, Mr. Chairman, I don't know if others have comments or secretary like to respond. Mr. Chairman. Commissioner, the a couple things I want to reassure you of. Number one, the engagement of the governor's office in a discussion about tribal agreements is what resulted in raising my level of understanding about what we were doing in the Highway 9 West interchange. The governor is exclusively supportive of the eight-year work plan and the process that's associated with it. He asked me a simple question. Does this fix the interchange for all of the traveling public and the stakeholders that travel through it every day? And it addresses part of it. It does not fix the comprehensive interchange. We've got to find an alternative that does that because we only have one project and one chance in the eight year work plan as it's conceived right now. And we need to go back and bet this completely quickly and deliver a project that can fix the interchange. Uh, that was the governor's concern as it always is. How does this impact all of the folks that use it uh, in that region and in that area? And I think that's a really important concept and facet because an operational improvement in the context of the eight year construction work plan is not what's defined in the current work plan. An interchange improvement is. Now we can debate about what constitutes an interchange improvement, but what I'm telling you is we need to fix the totality of that interchange and address all of the movements within it with the best project that we can come up with, including potential operational improvements, adjustments in the local road access systems, and all the things we're talking about. The only thing that you and I are, are disagreeing on is where consideration of an operational improvement can occur in the context of fixing that interchange. No, Mr. Secretary, I'll do respect. That's not what we're agreeing on. Last month, you told me that the reason that that meeting was canceled not because of some question by the governor. That's not what you said. It wasn't because, you know, the 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 engineers at ODOT found that this pro proposal didn't meet, you know, the, the standards or the hopes of it. You told me it was because of McGirt. But now you've completely flipped the script and you're saying something completely different here. And all I want to ask is, if this was insufficient, if this doesn't quite meet the standard of fixing that interchange, which is what we need to do, we do agree on that. We, we agree we need to fix the interchange. Then why did we vote on it? The governor asked you a very specific question, which is a good question. Does this in, does this in fact do what it said is going to do? That, that's a great question to ask in government. Um, we asked the same question when we voted on it twice and we got a different answer from you, because if not, I don't think this commission would have voted on it to start with. Why did we vote on it if it didn't do what it said it's going to do? Voted on the- Voted on the, to include that project on the eight-year plan. And again, the project has been in the eight-year construction work plan for a long time. Absolutely. Uh, and it's been left to languish and has gone unaddressed for a long time. We haven't made any improvements there since 2010, 2011. And it's time that we figure out what we're gonna to do to fix this interchange. And that is the most important thing. Can, can I butt in? <laughs> Cause th this could go on the rest of the day. Uh, could you give him a, a time frame that you can get this fixed? I mean, let's, let's look at a solution so we can bring some closure to this meeting. Can you get those plans modified and fixed to, to fix this, the, the whole program in the next 60 days, 90 days, six months, uh, because it, it needs to be done. And there's some, as I sat here and listened to the debate, there's some miscommunication from in this. Uh, where, where we are, we need to fix this, this intersection. We, we need to, to and, and I don't want to see us fix it and then be back in there in the middle of fixing it and trying to add to it. I, I'd like to have a set of plans. Uh, who's the design company that's, that's on this job and how long would it take to get it to where the man sitting right there would tell you 
this is a good solution. Commissioner, if I might, it's a process. Uh, we have folks working on it right now as far as what is possible to fix the interchange and what different alternatives need to be considered. Uh, that process, we can certainly put our best schedule estimate to. How, how uh, high on our priority? Can we move it to the number one priority right now? With uh, and, and You're saying you can make this a number one priority to get the plans amended? Second. Huh? I second the motion. I, com <laughs> that, that's all. Hey, hey, listen, if, if, if you don't do what I'm talking about doing, we're going to be up here tomorrow, all day today and tomorrow, arguing over the politics of it. I just want to fix the problem. And, and, and I want to put it into construction as fast as we can and, and find the money <laughs> where we have to go to get the money to fix it. As and, do and, I. And, and, I, I hear both sides of, of the story, and, and that's not what the discussion's about. The discussion's about when, are, when can we get it under construction. It was scheduled to start a few days ago, and, and it didn't get started. L let's give a real short fuse to that and get it done. The project is currently conceived, has right-of-way acquisition in 2022, construction in 2023, we will do everything that we can to prioritize the progress in the process that's going to determine the preferred alternative as fast as we can with a goal of meeting that schedule. And again, the process will, will bear this out. It will. It'll tell us what our preferred alternative is. It'll tell us if there are operational improvements that can be done in the context of fixing the interchange. We are going to need everybody's help in this uh, and everybody's attention to move it quickly. Everybody in this discussion wants the same thing. They do. Without question. All, all you want is fixed and done. I want it fixed and done right. Okay. I, want it, I want the law to be followed. Um, I don't want any secret meetings. I don't want, I don't want to read about uh, legal memos in the press. Uh, and I don't want our tribal governments who have been ter terrific partners for us to be disrespected because of a political agenda by this governor. That's what I want. Mr. Chairman and Commissioner Shannon, what I will do is improve communication with the Transportation Commission. Uh, again, I take responsibility for some of the issues that uh, have arisen I apologize for that. At the beginning of the meeting, I apologize again. I will do everything I can to, to make that better. Uh, also, you know, I want to emphasize as much as I possibly can. A project needs to be done at this location. We all agree with that. Let's figure out what that project needs to look like and get on with it. And I will work with anybody that I need to to make that happen quickly. One, one clarifying question that you've got to help me with, Mr. Secretary. I'm hearing you now refer to this project as an operational improvement. And I've never heard that referred to with this project. This has always been an interchange uh, project. That, that's what it is. That's what the proposal is that was submitted uh, by the Chickasaw Nation. That's what the, the engineers, um, every time I've ever heard it mentioned, was referred to as an interchange fix. When did it become an operational improvement only, because that's never been how this has been described. And so I'm also concerned um, that you, that we went through this process, you know, as you mentioned for years, this project started in 2003, we started first talking about, you know, fixing this project. And to now hear that we went through the process like we always have, and that now it's only an operational improvement. That, that seems like new information to me because I've never heard it referred to that until after your meeting with the, with the governor. And commissioner, again, I take responsibility for miscommunications because an interchange project fixes all of the problems that are within the interchange to the extent that they can be with the resources that are available. That means all of the movements that are resulting in accidents and congestion, not just the one. And 
we need to fix the interchange. An operational improvement is an improvement to one movement within an interchange. And certainly this, this one has got potential for consideration, but you have to understand what it takes to fix all of the movements within that interchange because this will not fix the problem for the future. This fix, Mr. Secretary, this does fix. The problem is you have stationary traffic on I-35 from people who are exiting, trying to get on the Highway 9. Uh, I have a 15 year old daughter and she's just learning to drive. She has her permit, so everybody beware of that. Uh, but she and my wife, they often take this route after school uh, to give her a little bit more highway experience. Most of the time, depending on you know the time of day, they can't take it after her cheerleading practice because the traffic is backed up and it's such a scary place to be. Um, they can't take that route because of that. This absolutely fixes that. This absolutely, and you, and you know it does. That's the, reason that, that's the reason it was signed off on by so many at ODOT. That's the reason that there was a handshake agreement. That's the reason that there was a kickoff meeting scheduled and prepared to move forward and not canceled until three days before because it does fix the initial problem, which is, the stationary traffic that was there. Now, if there's something else we want to encompass, if we want to make the project bigger, if we want to add more additional funding to it, or if you've got some partner, you've got somebody else that's willing to put $10 million into a $17 million deal, I'd like to hear it today. If not, I'm proposing that we move forward with the project as outlined because it, uh, it actually does fix what the real problem is, which is stationary traffic backing up onto I-35. That is a recipe for disaster and fatality right there. So I, I don't want to, I mean, I, I'm sensitive to time. We don't have to belabor the point. I do have a resolution um, that I'm hoping we can still salvage uh, some of the chaos that, you know, frankly has been uh, created by the governor's staff by insulting the eight-year plan by referring to one of them as a pet project. I think that that does more to harm uh, frankly, the hardworking men and women at ODOT who do a terrific job, uh, who have done a terrific job of managing this state's infrastructure system for a number of years and, and moving us from number 48 to number nine uh, in Bridges because of the eight-year plan as well as our uh, partnership with tribal government. So I'm, you know, I'm, you, you've answered my questions, Mr. Secretary, but I, I do, we, we need further uh, discussion because frankly, I'm not, I'm not satisfied. I'm not satisfied that, you know, at the 11th hour, this project that we had an agreement that was printed by ODOT, it hadn't been signed yet, but there was a handshake and there is an agreement to move forward. I, I am not satisfied that after consultation with the governor, now we're going to completely create an entire new system about how we deal with tribal government. Something has been extraordinarily successful for all 4 million Oklahomans. Um, and I don't think that there's a person in, in ODOT's um, uh, vast uh, menagerie of, of, of state employees who would disagree with that statement. So I'm happy to move forward to the resolution, Mr. Chairman, if you like. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Again, Commissioner, I will do everything that I can to make sure that we get you all of the information as we progress forward with the interchange at Highway 9 West and I-35. Uh, we're gonna keep you up to speed with everything that's going on there. Uh, we will include you in all of the discussions and we'll do a better job of communicating with both you and the commission. Uh, the one thing that I want to really emphasize is the support for the eight year construction work plan and the infrastructure that is included is not in jeopardy. Uh, we all agree that a project needs to be done at the Highway 9 West and I-35 interchange. We've just got to figure out what the ultimate improvement looks like and whether or not operational improvements can exist within that context. And we will get about the business quickly of doing that. The agreement that you referenced was developed in the context of an operational improvement in the absence of a selection of a preferred alternative at that location. The title of it is Interchange and Ramp Improvement. It's an operational improvement within that interchange. Mm -hmm. uh, Commissioner, and, and again, I don't wanna talk semantics with you. Um, 
what I can assure you of is give us a chance to pick up where we are today, move forward quickly, and we'll find an improvement that everybody can can uh, agree with and get our arms around. I, we had to, one already, Mr. Secretary. I, I would like to say if we can't get an overall solution to that, that, that we fix the problem. Those, those are not the same thing. Uh, there's, we got an $18 million fix to get the backup traffic off the highway. Uh, if, if we can't get a, a quick solution to the problem, let's come back and talk about it and, and do, do the contract. Mr. Chairman, we have a quick solution. We have an $18 million project and somebody willing to pay $10 million. We have an agreement uh, with ODOT and the tribes. We have a fix to this solution. I, this idea that we need to come up with a new one you know, I, I, I hear you. I, I hear you. And I'm not trying. I'm just saying I hate to spend $18 million and then turn right around and tear it all up again and, 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 and mess the traffic up fixing the overall problem. That's I, I agree. I agree. So let's get an, a quick solution to the overall. And um, and can we. Uh, Loud, loud and can, clear. Can Mr. you Chairman. cater and have food brought in for the rest of this <laughs> meeting? <laughs> I second that. <laughs> Thank you for the dialogue. I, I'm, I'm hearing all kinds of good body language from our chief engineer that says he'll get this drawn up and fixed. Is that correct, sir? We'll get on it, sir. All right. That's loud and clear. All right. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Secretary. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, Let's see, where are we here on this agenda? Uh, 69. Uh, do we need a motion? Uh, item number 68, uh, 69. Uh, 68, we beat to death and, and we're not voting on it. So 69, do we uh, need a, a, uh, a vote on the uh, eight year plan? It's already been approved, hasn't it? Mr. Secretary, if I may, it, it's a, I've asked that this be included on the agenda. It is a um, resolution affirming this commission's support of the eight-year plan. Uh, it's been uh, delivered in the packets and I would move adoption. I would press my motion that it be voted on. Seconds. Seconds. I have, I, <clears throat> excuse me, but I, you, what did you say? You, you withdrew this? Or you, you want us to uh, No, sir. I'm asking that we press forward on voting on it. All right. Yes, and sir. you moved, made the motion. We have a second. Uh, Madam Secretary, will you please call the roll? Mr. Can Cope. we have some discussion regarding that before we vote on it? Yes. Go ahead. Mr. Chairman, I would like to ask, is there some wording in this resolution that is not already in the previous statutes that require us to support it with a resolution. If this worked and it worked a long time ago, why do we now need a, a resolution of support? I'm confused. I second that, Bobby Alexander. May I answer, Mr. Chairman? Um, the reason that we need it, commissioners, is because we had a statement from the chief executive of this state uh, who referred to one of the projects as a pet project. And I don't want anybody, including the public, and more importantly, the legislature to believe that we've included anything less than a project on here that is based upon safety and the, the um, prioritization of financial needs. And so in my mind, and from many constituents that I've heard from, um, I wanna make sure that no one believes that this commission uh, is entertaining projects other than those that are put, put forth by the um, engineers at ODOT based upon priority. And also um, before, I've also heard today that apparently um, there's a new process that's being put forth into how we evaluate certain projects that were not included uh, when we first voted on this plan, of, that the, these that are on the eight-year plan. And so for those reasons, I would ask that the resolution uh, be affirmed, but certainly as you pointed out, there's nothing here that would be in disagreement with anything that we've said before. Well, yeah. I have a, this is Commissioner Alexander. You know, if, 
if we are saying the governor has said all this, I'm one of the appointees of the governor on this commission, and I've had nobody from the governor's office contact me, and I think that he would certainly be contacting the uh, other commissioners if he was trying to get something done, you know, special. Uh, I'd just like to say I've had no contact at all on any of this. And this is Peterson. Um, Commissioner Shannon, I know what you're trying to do with this resolution. You know, one of the paragraphs says, whereas before the eight-year plan was instituted, um, I, excuse me, I, I misread that, but I, I'm just, as a couple of the other commissioners said a minute ago, do we need to do this? It's clear to the commissioners about the eight-year plan. Right. So I don't think there's any disagreement among us. So restating this again, I'm not sure what it actually accomplishes. Well, the purpose of resolutions, uh, thank you for the question, Commissioner. Um, the, the purpose of resolutions is to make an affirmative statement about what this um, body uh, holds to be true and important. And so, um, I, again, I, I drafted it in a way, I don't think there's anything there that anyone would disagree with. Uh, but it certainly would, like other resolutions that we introduce, um, it's not that they have to be done. Uh, it's that they make a point to, to the public and to anyone else uh, who may have questions about what the position of this body is. For sure, uh, we've heard the secretary say that he doesn't agree with the governor that there are any pet projects. And I think it's important that, the, that this body speak as well, uh, that there aren't any pet projects on the eight-year plan. This is Commissioner Dyson. Can I can I say something? Yeah. When if when the secretary says that it's a priority one, and when Brian Taylor says they will get on the project, that's good enough for me. I don't need a resolution. I I believe them. I trust them. I think this commission trusts them, and I think we need to move on. And I would, Commissioner, thank you for that comment. And I would. I would say to you, I, I, I trusted them too, uh, and I trust them as well. Uh, but when last time we trusted them on this project, we hear that the project proceeded and it actually didn't address what we thought it was addressing on the eight year plan. I learned that today. So, um, as you know, for me, I think it's important that this body speak about what this body believes. And if there's something particular on the eight on the uh, resolution that you disagree with, I'm happy to entertain that, but you know, as again, as I mentioned again, everything I asked to be on there, um, I think is agreeable and I've heard stated not just by the commission, but by other ODOT officials as well. And Commissioner Alexander, I'm sorry, I didn't address your point uh, before. I think it was directed to me about the governor not contacting you. That's even more concerning to me uh, that he hasn't, that he's only contacting the director uh, because frankly, as I've read before, uh, Oklahoma statute um, is very clear that it is this body uh, who is ultimately responsible for our highway system. And so as the governor works and has wishes that he wishes to be done as it relates to highway projects, you are the person he should be contacting because you're the person with the vote. Well, well I haven't seen anything, uh, Commissioner Shannon, that uh, really points to the fact that he's pushing this highway one way or another outside of, you know, comments from you, but no proof, you know, and just, I understand that, that people that work for the governor might make a slip of the tongue some days, but. Uh, um, well, I would direct you to the newspaper today, the Tulsa world uh, had an article um, just today where the government had, where the governor uh, has provided comment about how he wishes that this project uh, be reconsidered or considered under a different level of scrutiny. So it's not any proof offered by me. I'm just going on statements made by the governor and his office. Are there any other discussions? It, Madam Secretary, will you call the roll? Mr. Coburn. This is the question uh, referring to the resolution? Yes. yes. Or this is the vote regarding the resolution? Yes. Okay, Coburn, no. Mr. Grimsley? Grimsley, yes. Mr. Frymiller? Frymiller, no. Mr. Shannon? Shannon, yes. Mr. McCowan? No. Mr. Dyson? Dyson, no. 
Mr. Alexander. Alexander, no. Mr. LaForge. Mr. LaForge. I'm sorry, I was muted, sorry. LaForge, no. Mr. Peterson. Peterson, no. The resolutions fail. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I may, just one comment. I just wanna make it clear that this body just voted not to affirm support of the eight year plan. Uh, that that's that not, is the statement that- That's not right. That we, did we not that's, just vote no? No, no, that's, that's not true. I support, I support this eight year plan and I think every one of these commissioners supports the eight year plan. But I trust that Secretary Gatz and his team will get this project done in the time that it was it was originally scheduled to get done on. Then why would we vote no to support the eight year We plan? voted that we don't need a resolution. That's all that we voted on was that, okay. we, don't, that we don't need the resolution. We don't we, want to make a statement as a body. We didn't. We, we've already made it. Except seven to two. Okay. Uh, Just being clear. The uh, Commission Shannon, you, you have a, a, a request for Attorney General's opinion on the McGirt ruling, how it affects ODOT projects. I do, thank you, Mr. Chairman. You know, I believe this commission uh, must be focused on and take the responsibilities of Oklahoma statute has vested with it. And with that in mind, I would move that we submit the following question to the Attorney General for his expeditious consideration. Um, the reason I'm asking that the um, AG's office be consulted is because last month we heard uh, the secretary bring up a U.S. Supreme Court case that was creating um, some alleged uncertainty about how ODOT could or should uh, contract with tribal governments. And for, for these purposes, I wanted it to be clear that the person who speaks on behalf of the state as it relates to all issues uh, pertaining to the law is the attorney general. So uh, I would move that we submit the following question to the uh, attorney general. Uh, the language reads as follows. Given the breadth of power, duty, and responsibility Oklahoma statute vests in the commission, and given the limitations relevant to the governor's role, limitations apparent in, for example, the recent Oklahoma Supreme Court rulings of treat one and treat two, as well as Oklahoma Statute 74, Section 1221 D5, what legal authority does the Oklahoma governor have to require revisions to our deviations from our eight year construction plan? That's, uh, we have a motion for, uh, to request an attorney general ruling on that motion. Yes, sir. Do I have a second? Grimsley seconds. Please call the roll. Mr. Coburn. Coburn, no. Mr. Grimsley. Grimsley, yes. <clears throat> Mr. Fry Miller. Mr. Fry Miller. Mr. Fry Miller, no. Mr. Shannon. Shannon, yes. Mr. McCowan. No. Mr. Dyson. Dyson, no. Mr. Alexander. Alexander, no. Mr. LaForge. LaForge, no. Mr. Peterson. Peterson, no. Uh, I'm number 71, director's report. Mr. Chairman, commissioners, uh, we've had a lengthy meeting, so I will be extremely brief in my director's report. Um, I would advise that May uh, is a continuation of our safety campaign, uh, focusing primarily on uh, make safety stick, everybody click. Uh, but for May, we are also going to bring a focus to bicycle and pedestrian safety uh, in the state of Oklahoma. Uh, this month's effort will include daily social media posts, uh, messages from Lieutenant Governor Matt Pinnell, and the promotion of local events like Bike to Work Day on May the 21st, uh, put on by the Association of Central Oklahoma Governments and other organizations. Uh, 
Currently, we have many highway work zones across the uh, state of Oklahoma. Uh, again, more than anything else, please pay attention in those work zones as you travel through them. Uh, recognize that there are is extraordinary amount of work going on right now, uh, some of which is attributed to the difficult winter conditions that we experienced. Uh, our transportation modernization initiative continues to progress, uh, looking at the organizational structure of the department. And uh, we are on track to have a final report out of recommendations that might materialize in June. Uh, and I'd call particular in, uh, attention to the fact that the McClellan Kerr Arkansas River Navigation System is celebrating its 50th anniversary on June the 5th. Uh, we will be in attendance at a, an event at the uh, Tulsa Port of Catoosa to commemorate that uh, 50th anniversary uh, and recognize the contributions of the waterway uh, to the state of Oklahoma's ability to move uh, goods and freight uh, throughout the state uh, throughout the nation and globally. So uh, with that, Mr. Chairman, I would stand for questions. Are there any questions? Do I hear a motion for adjournment? <laughs> so I'd like to make one, one comment first. I think oh. at the last meeting, Mr. Chairman, you said that this is not a rubber stamp committee and I think we, we've demonstrated we're not a rubber stamp. I wanna <laughs> affirm your, your uh, <laughs> statement there, so. Well, I, I, I referred to it because this person had, had accused this of watching this meeting go on. It's just boom, boom, boom. You know, just a bunch of rubber stamps is what he called us. And he just wasn't tuned in. Maybe he'll call me tonight and say, hey, that was a good meeting, Gene. <laughs> uh, do I have a motion for adjournment? Second. 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 Grimsley seconds. Madam Secretary, will you take the roll? Coburn. Coburn, yes. Mr. Grimsley. Grimsley, yes. Mr. Frymiller. Brian Miller, yes. Mr. Shannon. Shannon, yes. Mr. McCown. McCown, yes. Mr. Dyson. Dyson, yes. Mr. Alexander. Alexander, yes. Mr. LaForge. Yeah, LaForge, yes. Mr. Peterson. Peterson, yes. Oh, did you have one more? Oh, yeah. They're dead. I, I, I can't declare a German until we... Do, did we have a electronic communication for the whole meeting? Oh, yes, I'm sorry, I forgot. I did get a report that ODOT has been monitoring the public video and audio connection throughout this meeting has been maintained. Mr. Chairman, uh, Secretary Tim Gatz, the time is now 12.52 p.m. and we are ready to conclude the meeting. We are adjourned. Yeah. Uh -huh.